Hi everybody and welcome to part 2 of calculations of limited and excess reactions. In this video we're going to be looking at what we actually do once we've figured out when something is limited and something is excess. So what are the next steps after that? So let's have a look at this, this particular question. We've already figured out in the last previous video that the one um, that A is limited and that B is excess. Now that has a very significant meaning. It means that basically A is going to control the reaction because once A runs out, if that runs out, B cannot convert by itself into C and D. It needs A to be there. Okay, so really A is going to determine the extent of the reaction or determine, um, you know, the moles of this and this produced. Okay, so what we do is once we've found, once we've done the N coef ratios, this is N coef. Once we do that, we don't need that information anymore. Okay, so I suggest that you just forget about this information. It was just a tool to help us work out which one's limited and which one's excess. But now we know that this one is limited. Because I don't want you to use that information to, use, to do stoichiometry with that. Because you will not get the right answer. Okay, so um, using, using mole of A, we can pretty much work out how much C and how much D um, we have generated. So, let's figure out how much, say, mole of C um, this particular reaction has produced. So, it's quite simple. All you have to do is just your stoichiometric ratios. So, I always think of it as what you want over what you don't want. So, since you're looking for mole of C, you want the number of 4 in front and you don't want A. So, 4 over 2. Okay, and then you're using the mole of A, remember, because that's the information, that's where you pulled, that's the mole you're going to use, because that's the limited one. Okay, so, in other words, this is just 2. Okay, so, that's 2. And then, to find the mole of C, we just insert the mole of A into here. We know that it's just going to be 2 times 2, so, in other words, 4 mole. So, we have just figured out how much mole of C was generated. Okay? We'll be looking at a real life situation next. So just hopefully you understand this. Alright? And then the second case is finding the mole of D. The mole of D to find it. Um, you still have to use mole of A because that's our limited one. But now our ratio is a bit different because what we want is 5. What we don't want is 2. So we're just multiplying it by a different factor. So this is going to be 2.5 times by 2. That's a mole of A. And that's 5. 5 mole. Okay? So we have just worked out how much mole of C and D um, you have by using the limited value. Now the next thing that's really important is how to figure out how much excess is left over. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. Bye.